Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to our, our worship this morning. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, expect to be warmly greeted by those whom you are seated with. And the, these uh, cushion chairs up front are really comfortable. We, we suggest you try them. They're really comfortable. So, uh, again, I'm uh, Sharon Kelly, who will soon be your former interim pastor uh, on this Thursday. So it's been great to uh, be with you uh, during these past six months. Uh, the interim contract was for six months, so it concludes uh, this month. But the great news is the call committee is interviewing, so uh, we're moving in a forward direction, and that's uh, been prayed for weekly. So expect to hear more about that in the days to come. Let me just say a little bit about our worship. The bulletin will pretty much remain the same uh, as the structure of our liturgy, our four witnesses, gathering, word, meal, and sending. But each week we'll give you an insert of all the readings. So we're not printing the readings in the bulletin, they'll be accompanied by an insert. So you will have the readings to take with you uh, as an insert and of course the thoughts and the prayers of uh, the life of the congregation will be included on this insert as well. Oh, one other announcement. The First Lutheran Foundation shared a generous gift with the uh, YWCA Alternatives to Violence. During Lent, we had a weekly presentation on uh, sheltering love, looking, uh, inviting all the organizations that uh, help keep people safe by helping them find uh, safe housing. Of course, Project 1649 gives men shelter, uh, Craig Closet, and uh, the YWCA Alternatives to Violence. I'm forgetting the other ones. It was five Wednesdays, we had five uh, speakers on sheltering love, local organizations that help people have safe housing. Well, Wednesday at 9.30, they want to welcome uh, members from First Lutheran to take a tour of the YWCA. And if you're interested in doing that, I will go, of course. I'll go if you're available or unavailable. But um, it'd be great if we could have some folks from uh, First Lutheran to uh, join that tour. So that's Wednesday at 9.30. Just uh, let us know uh, Tuesday um, at the, uh, in here at the church office. Or just show up Wednesday on Washington Street at the YWCA. Are there any other announcements concerning the life of the congregation? Yes. Hey guys, so uh, I just wanted to give a little plug. Next week, uh, we have Jazz Fest. We're gonna be hosting the second annual Janesville Jazz and Music Fest. That is Saturday, June 1st, 2 to 8 p.m. right here at First Lutheran. Uh, so in and among all of your uh, weekend activities, if you're fishing, if you're going to see some graduation parties, be sure to stop by. It is an amazing opportunity. We have some great bands lined up. Uh, we have some great food trucks uh, that are going to be participating. Free admission, by the way, is the entire thing uh, is free admission. We're going to be raising funds through our charity pie option for a variety of community nonprofits. There's something for kids of all ages. We've got the bookmobile. We got a fire truck. We got a bounce house. We got a 30-foot slide. We have inflatable jousting. We have fun for everybody. It's going to be amazing. So this is a great opportunity to spread the word and share a little love with our community and reach out in only the way that First Lutheran can. So that is Saturday, June 1st, 2 to 8 p.m., Jazz Fest. Can't wait to see you there. Thank you, Music Director Ben. We'll look forward to seeing the photos of him in the bounce house. So, uh, yeah, I know, all that energy. Uh, I, I just had one other thought, and it, it escaped me, so if it'll come back to me, I'll, I'll definitely share it. So we uh, turn our hearts and minds to our worship. Our greeting, if you would stand as able, please. 
From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you and against one another and against the earth and trusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all us. We store our treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors to me. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Our gathering hymn is in your ELW 414. That is hymn number 414. Holy God, we praise your name. And at this time, I'd like to invite all the kids uh, forward. And we have two stations here where there are some shakers and wood blocks. And I'd like to encourage all of you kids to come on up and offer up some praise uh, as you can, uh, hands-free. And so uh, that is hymn number 414.
when I conclude with the phrase, the word of the Lord, you're asked to respond, thanks be to God. So the first reading is, uh, uh, during the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with Paul and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When Paul had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We sailed from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, following the, the, the following day to Neapolis, and there from Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us, and she was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When Lydia and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. The second reading is the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of the Lord is his light, and his lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the people will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no lamp, but they need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Judas, Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. You heard, you heard me say to you, I am going away and, and I am coming. If you love me, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Uh, one more announcement uh, concerning our worship, so I don't forget. <laughs> Today is the fourth Sunday of the month, and so we want to offer the healing affirmation with oil. So we say a faith statement and then anoint your head with oil by making the sign of the cross. So the communion servers will be up front, and I'll just stand behind them, giving you enough room if you would like to receive um, the healing affirmation with oil. So um, we invite you uh, to share in that ritual in the life of the congregation. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us to follow in the way of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. Give us in this path of discipleship so that as you bless us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of peace nearby with our words and our deeds. Amen. <clears throat> For John in this gospel to us this morning, the preferred and primary way to characterize discipleship is abiding, by using the word abiding. Jesus making our home with us. Just like Lydia invited the Paul and the disciples to come stay at her home. Abiding means staying, remaining, dwelling, lodging, lasting, persisting, and continuing. So Lydia shows us in the, the book of Acts how to be at home in the presence and power of our Lord Jesus Christ through the witness of others. For this abiding, is the priority of our lives. It is the primary and preferred way of discipleship that John is offering and that we hear in the book of Acts. Abiding is based on uh, the relationship between Jesus, the Spirit, and the Father. This word abiding shows up in the Gospel of John 40 times. 40 times. And so it's that significant to the Gospel of John. And it's significant for John to describe this is what God does in our lives. Remaining, staying, dwelling, lodging, persisting, continuing, abiding. God abides in Jesus. Jesus abides in God. Jesus abides in and with us. We cannot bear fruit. Our words cannot be godly, and our deeds cannot be holy unless Jesus abides in us. The Holy Spirit abides with Jesus. As we heard from the book of Acts, disciples abide with or in Jesus. Jesus abides in the relationship with the Spirit and the Father. John is indicating that the Spirit of truth, this abiding by Jesus, is already present within the disciples as it's been present with us since our baptism. John tells us that we know Jesus abides with us, but at the same time, we are looking for more persisting, continuing, staying, and remaining into the future of our life with the Lord. So one of the questions this gospel raises for us, as well as the book of Acts, how is this loving abiding, how has this loving abiding by our risen Lord Jesus Christ prepares us for abiding with one another, for abiding with each other in the presence and power of the love of God and in communion with the Holy Spirit? This question is a tall order and it's not to be answered immediately. The answer is through our lifetime. But it began with the mark of the cross of Christ on our foreheads. Many of us are familiar with the preamble to the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And I just want to make a 
couple of examples about that preamble to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Amendment 3 states that a soldier cannot be quartered or stationed in your home without the consent of you as the owner. The government, the United States government, cannot force a soldier in your home for abiding, for staying, for remaining, especially during peacetime. Amendment 4, often violated, is the right to no unreasonable search or seizure of your person, your things, or the house you occupy. You don't have to own it, but you can't be subjected to any unreasonable search or seizure. A warrant has to be issued for probable cause. So my point is that these United States, not really united before and during the Civil War, was struggling to abide by this preamble to the United States Constitution, this Bill of Rights. We abide by this preamble to our U.S. Constitution. And this document, historical and legal, is for abiding in these United States. You have to agree to it before you become a citizen of these United States. It is assumed for those of us who are born here that we are going to abide by the Constitution, that it will remain a primary document of significance to us as citizens of these United States. Today, as we memorialize our war dead, they help us to abide with these documents. They help make it so for the United States to stay in existence. I used to keep a copy of the Constitution in my car. And I've long since lost it. Because your rights can be violated for searching and seizing your car or the items in your car without a warrant. So abiding with each other as citizens of the United States is asserted by this legal and historical document. I no longer carry a copy of the Ten Commandments, but as we know, those first five commandments are about our relationship with our Lord God. And the remaining commandments are about our relationship with each other, starting with honor your father and mother. An abiding relationship, especially when known and experienced, even when it's a difficult one, it's still an abiding relationship. At the memorial yesterday for Barbara Jean Schmidt, one of her sons stated, we always will abide with our parents, whether they are alive or deceased. We abide as a congregation and with other members of the Christian community. Not only because we have the model constitution of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, not only because we have the Bible, the Book of Faith, but also because we have the mark of Christ, the sign of the, the cross made upon our foreheads at baptism. Unlike the constitution of the congregation of the United States, or reading the Bible, or reviewing the Ten Commandments. We cannot see this cross on our foreheads, but we are invited to trust that God in Christ Jesus abides with us, abides with me. The Spirit of Christ abides with you and all. Each time we show up, whether here at worship or for someone in need, even for those unknown to us, like we did for the YWCA Alternatives to Violence. We showed up in measurable time during that, and we're showing up in godly time. For love abides because Christ Jesus, crucified and risen, has shown up in our lives, creating our abiding in the Word and in the meal for life within. In our worship, our prayers, fellowship, and our service, we abide in Christ, 
who abides in us. So we ask for you to consider how we abide. Because our abiding is to be reoccurring, is to occur as often as possible. As we shared this morning at 7.45 a.m. worship, we gather there weekly. When I'm no longer here next Sunday, I know you're going to gather at 7.45 and at 9.15 for abiding in Christ, for abiding with each other. And that is going to reoccur here at First Lutheran. And we also ask during this time, as you begin to interview, the call committee begins to interview candidates, that you will think about yourselves as the reoccurring gifts of sharing financially your reoccurring gifts using the electronic giving system like Simply Giving or the electric fund transfer. We do not need here at First Lutheran to go into a summer slump financially, especially as you will be considering a pastor. We receive and give thanks for your abiding with First Lutheran, for you are a gift of the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, our abiding, never letting us go, never forsaking us for who we are and whatever space we occupy are not ever God forsaken with Jesus Christ abiding in us as we abide in Christ. Amen. So this is great that uh, Ben was seated not far from the, uh, further away from whichever instrument he's going to play. So that way I can announce the hymn of the day without him having to shout. So the hymn of the day is, I want to walk as a child of the light, 815. 815 in your hymn. So we'll give you a few minutes.
I want to invite you to stand as able for our prayers of intercession. As you notice, there are quite a few of them, but each Sunday we will only share just a few of them. Let us pray. In your mercy, strengthen the younger churches and support them in times of trial. Make them steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord. Let their faith and zeal for the gospel refresh and renew the witness of your people everywhere. Hear us, the Lord. Preserve our nation, especially on this Memorial Day weekend, in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceable life of integrity. Grant health and favor to all bearing office, enlisted military, first responders. Hear us, the Lord. By the spirit of affection and service, unite all families that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lead us, support, lead us to support all in anticipating celebrating their baptism. Landon, Gavin, Henry, Grin. Hear us, the Lord. Let your blessing rest upon seed time and harvest, the commerce and industry, the leisure and rest, the arts and culture of all people throughout the world. Take under your special protection those whose work and rest is difficult due to inclement weather and natural disaster, especially the citizens in Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Nebraska. Hear us, the Lord. Comfort with the grace of your Holy Spirit all who are in sorrow and need, sickness or adversity especially Darlene, and any hospitalized and homebound. Grant to all a grant, grant, and to all grant a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Hear us, the Lord. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you and your church on earth, who now rest from their labors, especially those whom we name before you. Barbara Jean Hoffman Schmidt. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Hear us to the Lord. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, holy God, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share Christ's peace. For our offering song, we can turn to page 595. Although you might know these songs, the words may be knit unto your heart. Jesus loves me. 595, Jesus loves me.
worship continued in the bulletin with the offering prayer. Let us pray together. The
Let us pray together. Oh God, as a mother comforts her child, so we will comfort the people. Peace like a river. Amen. Me too. Okay. <laughs> 